Hello, this is Dr. Kessler. This is uh, part two of lecture two. Uh, in lecture two, part one, we discussed the strategic planning process, all the phases and the steps and the challenges and the reasons why we needed to uh, do the phases in the right order. For this uh, lecture, we're going to discuss the first two steps or phases of the strategic planning process, including the getting ready part. And then uh, the part that may be a little more challenging for some, titled Assessing the Situation. Uh, we'll uh, go through a number of major points, uh, including uh, trying to understand what it means to get ready. Uh, certainly, strategic planning is a big initiative. It's going to require some planning, some organization, designation, and involvement of key people, uh, and a pretty substantial number of people, et cetera. So, We'll go through the uh, different uh, things you need to remember when you're getting ready to do strategic planning. Uh, then we'll uh, discuss the uh, second phase, which is really assessing the situation. Uh, as I mentioned before, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to spend time on mission and vision and values until you really uh, look at the situation facing the organization, uh, determining if the situation uh, potentially uh, requires that the organization shifts the direction slightly, which may then come back and cause a modification to the uh, overall mission and vision of the organization. Uh, we'll talk about how to assess the situation, uh, how to identify and focus and explain and discuss key issues. Uh, we'll discuss the importance of staying focused externally, at least, uh, at least in the beginning. Uh, it's a natural tendency of people to want to focus internally, as we've said in earlier lectures, and uh, focus on you know, our people problems and our morale problems and our communication problems. Um, but those are internal issues, and if you don't address your external issues first, you may not have internal issues because your organization may not exist. And so uh, we'll talk about, uh, in the beginning of the planning process, maintaining a, 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 an external strategic focus. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, not forgetting about the internal issues, but putting them in the right place in the process. And then we'll finally talk about how to put together all of our phase two situational assessment results so that they can be used in the strategic planning process. So uh, getting ready. When we talk about getting ready for strategic planning, you know, we, we and the organization need to recognize that there's uh, a lot of time and effort and resources that have to be devoted to an effective strategic planning process. Uh, now, I'm assuming the role of the facilitator or the person leading the actual work product, not the head of the agency. Um, and so it, it's incumbent upon me as a facilitator of strategic planning to make sure that I, I make the senior leadership aware of what's required so that the planning process doesn't get shortchanged or off track later on. Uh, and so uh, what uh, is necessary is meeting with the leadership, uh, communicating and asking them, interacting with them to understand the reasons that they think the strategic plan needs to be done and what they would like to see as a result of the strategic planning process. Do they just want to see a document that's nice and shiny and says the right things so they can hold it up to their, uh, their uh, investors or stakeholders? Uh, or do they really want a strategic plan uh, that's going to move the organization uh, in a way that addresses strategic challenges. You know, what do they really want? What's, what's the desire of senior leadership? This is important because uh, one time I facilitated with the United States Coast Guard and the senior leadership were all admirals and they were all very close to retirement. And the reality that I learned from them in the meeting with them was that they were so close to retirement they wanted a strategic plan that was sort of uh, uh, the status quo plus a little bit. They didn't want anything that was radical. They didn't want to suggest the reality was that the Coast Guard fleet was obsolete and outdated. They didn't want anything that dramatic. So uh, understanding your leadership and your leadership situation is extremely important. Uh, make sure also that we then design a process uh, that's going to work for the organization. As a facilitator, this is what we have to do. Um, we also uh, need to uh, recognize that this step two we're going to talk about or phase two in a second the situational assessment is so critically important to everything that follows that it actually is a sort of a mini process uh, in and of itself. And we'll talk about that in a second. So we'll dis discuss uh, the approach we use in phase two 
for putting it together, the situational assessment. We'll also uh, discuss uh, uh, what information we need uh, to go through the strategic planning process, to do the situational assessment. Uh, we'll develop a work plan. And, and most of us, if we're uh, mid-career and we're experienced uh, um, supervisors and leaders, we've developed work plans before. It's not a new thing. Uh, we, we discussed the outcomes of the planning process, the issues uh, that uh, are, uh, have already been raised. Uh, we discussed the steps and, and the activities and the roles, and we put together a timeline. So all of that would be essential in having a work plan to do the strategic plan, you update it, revise it, uh, and then ultimately to implement it and monitor it and make sure it's being implemented. Uh, in phase one, uh, it, it's a time for uh, just getting ready. It's time for organizing the right people, the right uh, groups. Uh, and so uh, organizing something called a strategic planning steering committee is critical. And the person that leads that is really critical because that person becomes the eyes and the ears of the senior leadership. Now, it may be in some organizations that it's small enough that the senior leader team is the strategic planning steering committee. It may be. Uh, sometimes that's not a great thing because the most senior leaders in the organization usually are very busy with operational and tactical things, and we need a committee focused on the strategic planning initiative. So, you know, if we can be some of the same people but also some different people on the strategic planning steering committee, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and also on the committee are the strategic planning staff and the facilitators. It would be somebody like me. Um, it might be the agency head. It might not be. I've uh, seen both cases where a uh, senior leader uh, wants to be kept informed but not on the, on the, the work groups. Um, but certainly there has to be some representation from the senior leadership team uh, in the organization. Uh, we also want to make sure that there are some key staff members who can make key contributions, directors of units and divisions uh, that are critical, uh, primary line operational units in the organization. Uh, in some cases, I've seen uh, groups put stakeholders, even though they're not inside the organization. Uh, they may come to the meetings and participate. Uh, and if you have a uh, organized labor component, certainly you'll want to have a union representative on the strategic planning steering committee. Uh, there's many other groups as well, as we'll talk about in a second. Um, this uh, phase two of doing the situational assessment is so intensive and so important and critical now that having a situational assessment working group is really a good idea. And uh, well, that, that's not the strategic plan steering committee. In fact, it, instead it's the uh, best technical and, and, and mid-tier leadership people in the organization. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, there might be uh, later when we talk about uh, coming up with specific measurable outcomes uh, and activities and outputs. Uh, that requires performance measurement, and if performance measurement is not something that's been done in your organization on a regular basis, there might be a need to have a performance measurement work group to, uh, to uh, tie into what we're going to talk about. Uh, and then uh, down the road, once we get the plan developed, implementing the plan is a big challenge, as we'll talk about later in the semester. So having strategy implementation teams is also very important. Uh, in phase one, uh, we uh, um, Uh, this actually uh, phase two, the slide's labeled incorrectly, um, but this is a, a, an example of uh, being able to uh, look at the, oh, I'm sorry, this is a phase one example. It's the uh, uh, example of uh, getting ready. And, uh, and so uh, one time I was working with an agency in D.C. called the Mine Safety and Health Administration, and uh, uh, at the time there were a lot of challenges facing the mining industry. And so uh, the MSHA uh, really wanted to uh, take this planning effort and use it to do something very important. And so they uh, actually uh, put together dates we did uh, where the plan had to be in place by a certain date. Uh, and we listed the, the, the tasks uh, necessary to, uh, to get the plan in place. We were going to develop our preliminary assessment, our situational assessment of the safety and health situation or the issues. Uh, then we were going to conduct our formal strategic planning session, which generally is two days and off-site. Uh, we were then going to uh, take what we came out of the two-day session with, develop, uh, refine, and finalize it. Uh, 
And then we're going to uh, uh, figure out a communication strategy to communicate to the employees, to the stakeholders, what the plan is all about. And then um, we're going to use all of that content to write and develop a new strategic plan. Um, recognize at the same time, this is part two of the example, that additional tasks were necessary uh, coming out of the uh, strategic planning session. Um, and so uh, you can sort of see here what the bullets suggest is that we had to use the strategic plan to develop annual and operating plans because if you're really going to use the strategic plan as a management tool, it then has to, to, to be, it has to drive uh, the annual plan, the, the yearly plans, and the operational plans of the organization. Otherwise, it's going to be a nice pretty document, but not used. Uh, we also uh, had to have to, when we do strategic planning, make sure that the planning process and the budget process where the money lives and the management processes are integrated. Uh, we also have to refine performance measurement uh, coming out of the strategic planning session and understand how we're going to collect the performance data that we, we need to measure our progress in implementing the strategic plan and achieving the goals and objectives. And then we're going to have to monitor the progress and make any needed adjustments on an ongoing basis. So these are all parts of the planning process necessary to make sure uh, that the organization recognizes what lies ahead. Sorry about that little uh, mix up there. Uh, the slide popped up. And I thought it was uh, actually a phase two slide. So now we're into phase two. So we understand the getting ready part, and now we're shifting from getting ready uh, to phase two where we want to assess the challenges facing the organization. Now in your text, and in most texts, uh, the uh, authors will take you through a process called SWOT, Strengths and Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats. And as I mentioned in earlier lectures, you have to be a little careful about taking that structured of an approach. Because especially in a two-day off-site session, you can spend hours and hours having people in breakout groups write their SWAT, their strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. You can paste these things all over the wall, and you can come back together and not know what to do with them um, because it's so much information. And you know the weaknesses are always a, you know, our uh, we don't have enough budget, and the the, uh, the strengths are always we have an outstanding workforce, and so you spend a lot of time on stuff that's you know a little fuzzy and a little difficult to actually get your hands around. And so I'd like to sort of characterize, and certainly SWAT could be useful in this phase, but I'd like to characterize this phase, this phase in a broader, more, uh, more um, unstructured uh, approach. What you're trying to achieve in phase two is to intensely, aggressively uh, look at what's happening in the world, uh, especially the world in which your organization functions and then ask yourself uh, in terms of the recent past and the present and the near-term future uh, whether that world has changed, whether the expectations from that world have changed, whether the customers have changed, whether the technology has changed, whether the economics or the politics have changed, and then to be able to say to yourself, given, given what's really going on in the world, our organization really, there's some gaps between what we do now and what the world is all about. In other words, the uh, alignment between the organization and the world is a little out of out of sync. And in most cases, when you do strategic planning, you'll find that that's the case. So in phase two, assessing the situation, uh, we need to, to significantly and potentially labor-intensively uh, uh, do this activity before our off-site session. We do not want to take our two days and have our senior leadership come in and start popping out ideas about the situation facing the organization. And so for that reason, as I suggested earlier, a situational assessment work group, putting together a work group uh, of your most experienced subject matter experts from throughout the organization, and even potentially bringing in outsiders. And we've done this in many cases. Uh, if you're in the banking industry, we bring in banking experts. If you're in the healthcare industry, you can bring in healthcare experts. Uh, and bringing them into the situational assessment to really weigh uh, on um, with the group what the key challenges facing the organization and the industry and the sector are all about. Um, and so this group gets together, it spends some time, it gathers and examines documentations and data, and it looks at uh, what's happening in the external world and tries to make sense 
uh, and summarize in a, in a way what the key things are. This requires reviewing uh, lots and lots of documentation, uh, a lot of uh, things that are happening. Uh, it means understanding the authority, of, statutory authority, if you're a public sector organization and you're defining legislation, or if you're private sector uh, looking, and especially if you're a, uh, um, a listed in the, in the stock markets, uh, you know, looking at sort of the, uh, the the basis upon which the organization filed its papers and what it's all about and how it got organized and, and established. It means looking at past strategic plans, looking at recent budgets, looking at any program evaluations or studies or audits that have been conducted, uh, looking at media documentation and all the things that help the, help the uh, analysts understand what challenges are facing the organization. Uh, also, it means looking at uh, how things have been done in the past and how they've done now, and maybe how that's changed, and how well that lines up with the issues we've been that are starting to emerge. It means looking at key events in the history and how the organization has addressed major disruptive events. And it means developing key perspectives about past and the present in terms of the organization's responsibilities and approaches for achieving them. So it, it really, it's a lot of things. It's a complex activity. What's happening out there? Uh, and, and in our text, we get lots of tools we can use uh, to be able to look at the different sectors, like the uh, regulatory environment, the uh, customer environment, the technological environment, the uh, socioeconomic environment. And, and we use these tools to be able to see what the emerging condition issues are so that the organization can then bounce itself against those issues to see if it's correctly aligned. Excuse me. Okay, uh, so in phase two, uh, we want to assess the situation. We want to identify potential issues, changes that, that have or already, uh, that have already or will occur in the future. Uh, this is in the organizational target domain, whether you're in the healthcare sector or the military sector, um, what's happening in, 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 in the regulatory environment, as we've said before, what's happening with demographics and culture and attitudes and expectations. Certainly, the millennial generation uh, is, uh, you know, has been transformed by the use of social media and mobile technology. Uh, technology in all ways, geopolitics, uh, terrorism has affected a lot of our organizations. Uh, if you're working with an international company, uh, a lot of the geopolitics have significant issues. Uh, you can think about the euro and the challenges with Greece, uh, geography and other natural factors, weather. Uh, floods, hurricanes, etc. Federal, state, and local relationships, roles, and responsibilities if you're in a public sector organization. Economics, uh, recessions, uh, unemployment challenges, finance, what the Federal Reserve is likely to do, and so on. So there's lots and lots of things that need to be analyzed in a systematic way, that, that, and, then, and then that information needs to be used to uh, analyze whether the organization is correctly aligned. Lots of data collection methods. Uh, most of the data is likely to exist, but the situational assessment work group may decide to do a survey or focus group or interviews to get more information. Also, uh, the situational assessment work group may want to go out into its organization and uh, talk to other employees and stakeholders and leaders and do some interviews and talk to uh, subject matter experts in a variety of areas, including industry and academia, uh, to gather more issues. Uh, so you can see this is a challenging enterprise. Now I'll tell you as a student, um, my recent classes have said to me when I asked at the end of the semester, what was the most challenging part of this? Uh, almost universally they said conducting the situational assessment. And so uh, you can see that, that this is an important issue, but it's also not, not as easily done, especially if you're an organization that you don't know a lot about. Uh, dealing with internal issues. Uh, Throughout uh, this phase, uh, it says phase three here, but throughout phase two, uh, a lot of the internal issues are going to come up, especially if you start talking to people in the organization. They're going to say, oh, our communication in this organization is terrible, or our leadership has problems, or uh, we really feel like we're lost, or there's no respect for what we do, uh, or uh, you know, the, the turnover is a real problem. And these are important issues. And at no point in this class do I want to downplay the importance of internal issues. However, and you should document them. And so we should have a separate section in our situational assessment that comes back to the internal issues. Because as we um, go through the planning process, 
when we start planning a plan to, to address our change, to address the external issues, we have to come back and ask ourselves if internally the organization is up to, to what it needs to be to make those changes. So those internal issues are going to be very important. So make sure that you know when you do the SWOT analysis, your strengths and weaknesses, make sure it's just not generic uh, and fluffy. Uh, make sure it's detailed and specific. And let's make sure we incorporate it. But we incorporate it as a, as a final section of the report here in phase two when we're doing the situational assessment. Summarizing writing a report, writing the report, uh, our situational assessment work group has to organize and summarize the information, prepare the situational assessment report, and present to the strategic planning steering group the results before you do your off-site session. And, um, and I want to let you know there's one bullet on here that's not relevant, uh, which is the uh, nonprofit organizations text because we're not using that text. But uh, there is an example that I provided uh, on Blackboard uh, for uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration where they really took this seriously and they gathered their very best people and they did a tremendous job and, and I hope everyone gets a chance to look at the uh, situational assessment report done by OSHA a few years ago. So at the end of part two here, uh, I hope it was uh, reasonably clear. Uh, we tried to uh, talk about uh, phase one, getting ready. Uh, and getting ready means a lot of planning, a lot of organizing, a lot of figuring out the time frame for strategic planning, uh, the steps you're going to use in strategic planning, and, uh, and who's going to be involved. And so uh, that's really kind of key when we talk about that. And then we spent the rest of our time talking about conducting a situational assessment, which is your phase two. And so in phase two, uh, before you do your mission vision values, which will be phase three, uh, you're going to assess the situation. You're going to look at what's happening in the world. Uh, you're going to uh, document and identify all the key issues. Uh, you're going to stay focused externally, but you're going to keep track of what's the issues that have been pointed out in terms of the internal issues as well. Uh, so uh, we won't lose sight of the internal issues, but we really want to stay focused on what's happening in the environment in which the organization exists. Once we do that, we're going to package our phase two results, and we're going to provide that information to the off-site participants in advance of the off-site session. So when people come to the off-site session, they've had a chance to sort of dig through and disagree or amend or adjust um, all of the situational assessment factors that have been pointed out here in phase two. That's the end of lecture two. Uh, we'll continue our discussion uh, in uh, lecture three.